In the following we will find the answers to the questions of who the Anunnaki aliens are and where they come from, what they look like, how they helped humans evolve from primates and protected them from reptilians. In order to answer these questions, I used mainly the information from the Forgotten Book of Genesis and secondarily the information from the book The Etheric Crystal, both written by Radu Sinamar. The information I presented briefly so that the video does not last too long and be hard to follow. Also, although I have mentioned it in other videos and I will certainly do it again, it is important to know how Radu Sinamar came to know the truth about the Anunnaki and the distant history of our planet. In order to understand why he presents the truth in books and not personal assumptions as other authors do. From the book Inside the Earth, the second tunnel written by the same author we find that the crust of the planet near the Earth's mantle has several cavities of different sizes. Some cavities are empty and in others there are cities populated by highly spiritually and technologically evolved beings. One such underground city is Apollos, which is located in Transylvania just below the Apusini Mountains, Romania. The inhabitants of this underground city want to help us know the true history of humanity and for this they gave Radu Sinamar a device through which moments from the planet's past can be viewed. More details about this device can be found in the book Forgotten Genesis. Now let's see what Radu Sinamar saw through that device for accessing Akashic cliches about Anunnaki aliens. According to the book Genesis Forgotten, the home planet of the Anunnaki aliens is in the Sirius A system, and the Anunnaki are those who came from the Divine Light, and they are considered to be true spiritual masters in the galaxy. Anunnaki of the Sirius system A are beings who exude purity, the power of righteous action, and high knowledge in various forms. We can think of them as spiritually highly evolved monks who are worthy, but at the same time humble and wise. They prefer the alternative of peace and evolution, that is, that which is in accordance with the laws of universal harmony, and seek to respect as much as possible the free will of the civilizations with which they come into contact. In the various conflicts between extraterrestrial civilizations they do not attack, but prefer to often act as mediators. Intervening only if they are attacked or the recklessness of some civilizations could bring great destruction or irreparable disturbance in the natural course of things and divinely integrated plans. The extraterrestrials from Sirius A system who are also technologically advanced are the leaders of the Galactic Alliance in the galaxy sector where our solar system is located. Anunnaki from the Sirius A system are the original race, the oldest of which many other secondary civilizations have developed and have relocated over time to other planets and other stellar systems in the galaxy. Most of them settled near the constellation the Greater Dog, especially in the constellation Orion and especially in the stellar systems of the Orion Belt. It seems that if some of the original Anunnaki migrated at some point to another planet in another part of the galaxy, then they kept the name Anunnaki but took another name to differentiate them from the original Syrians from the Sirius A system. It also seems that a common way used by the vast majority of advanced extraterrestrial civilizations is to send to a suitable planet that part of its members that has not evolved as fast as the rest of the population. They are relocated to another planet that better corresponds to their vibrational frequency where they evolve at their own pace. Those who remain on their home planet can thus continue their evolution rapidly without being hindered by those who have been relocated. So did the Sirius A system Anunnaki, who in successive phases relocated entire segments of their planet's population to other star systems? It seems that such migrations to other planets respect the cosmic law of the affinity of vibrational frequencies because no being can remain in an existential reality if it does not correspond to that local frequency. This is also one of the issues that has misled many authors, giving rise to controversial opinions. Their mistake was to consider one or more of the secondary civilizations spread across the galaxy as the original Sirius civilization from the Sirius A system. From the book The Ethereal Crystal we also find some interesting things from the very distant past of the Sirius Eons or the announcers of the Sirius A system. Here is a summary of what the book says about them. An immense period of time, about 100 million years ago in the Sirius A system there was an evolved humanoid civilization, which had reached a fairly advanced technological level. 
that civilization was able to travel interstellar with huge ships, which meant that it had some control over the laws that govern space and time. The members of that civilization were not the Syrians of today but their very distant forerunners. The race of those humanoid beings has evolved over time and undergone many transformations. It eventually disappeared, but various pieces of information in its DNA were passed on to many other types of humanoid civilizations that followed one another in time from the planetary system of the star Sirius A, until it reached the characteristics of the current Sirius race. The typology of beings in that extremely old Syrian civilization was quite similar to humans, even though their average height was about 1.90, 2 meters. Their skin was pearly white with a slight blue tinge, and most of the hair was black to dark blue. Their eyes were larger than those of an ordinary human being, but their mouths were small. The harmony of their features, the dignified attire, the verticality of the character radiating from the way they moved and acted, were transmitted by eons to the present-day Syrians. The ancestors of the present-day Syrians knew quite well their own constellation but also the constellation Orion which they had inhabited by forming colonies. Later, these populations were individualized and reformed by hybridization with other alien races. For about 30 million years, the typology of that race has followed one another over time, but the somatic forms of that civilization have revolved around the same characteristics, their skin becoming slightly bluer. It seems that the Earth was one of the sole planets of the ancient Syrians. The Sirius Aeons or Anunnaki of the Sirius A system were the ones who terraformed the Earth and created the right environment for humans, plant, and animal species, and even the planet to develop and evolve by placing the spacecraft we call the Moon in Earth's orbit. The Anunnaki Syrians are the basis for the birth and formation of human civilization, and they are also the basis of human DNA supporting epochs in its evolution and helping humanity in the key points of its development both spiritually and materially. In some cases, when necessary, the Sirius Aeons even influenced the course of history so that the evolution of the human being would take place in the best possible conditions. Here's a brief overview of how the Sirius or Anunnaki aliens in the Sirius A system and those in the Orion Belt helped humans evolve from primates and protect them from reptilians. Before we begin, it should be noted that other extraterrestrial civilizations in our galaxy, such as the Pleiadians, Arcturians, and others, played an important role in the evolution of humans from primates. All these extraterrestrial civilizations were guided by higher celestial entities and everything was done according to the will of God who worked and manifested through these extraterrestrial civilizations, which are his tools in creation. Thus, According to the Forgotten Book of Genesis, about 372,000 years ago, a huge alien spacecraft in the shape of a planetoid came close to Earth. At that time, there was a terrible conflict in our solar system between several extraterrestrial civilizations, and that ship called Nibara, Nibiru, or Nibiria, which belonged to an extraterrestrial civilization in the Orion Belt, was severely damaged in that war. In order to be repaired, the Anunnaki aliens decided to extract gold, titanium, and other ores as well as quartz crystals from Earth. Thus, many other small transport ships descended from Earth on the huge spherical ship, which then returned to the spacecraft in orbit, bringing the necessary materials for repairs. The commander of one of the Anunnaki transport ships that came to Earth to extract or had the idea to use some of the primates that proved to be more curious and evolved to do the mining work. Because the aliens could not stay too long time in the atmosphere of our planet due to some physical characteristics that were not compatible with their constitution. So the captain of the ship named Tenneco and the crew decided to do this by using a mental transmission technology on the primates and then using their bodies for things on the surface of the planet. In this way the primates were helped to evolve very quickly due to the mental influences of extraterrestrial beings and their technology, and on the other hand the crew in turn benefited from the help of physical work from those large primates. The decision taken then by the Anunnaki alien named Tenneco was the very beginning of the path for the transformation of primitive beings into higher beings through the genetic transformations that followed. Tenneco was a gentle being who showed a deep respect for the cosmic laws, was about 2.5 meters tall, had no hair at all, 
and his head was slightly elongated backwards. Tenneco can be considered the first parent of mankind, because his mental influence on primates through that extraterrestrial technology has determined over time that the DNA of those primates to intervene influences that were specific to his DNA. Also, the Nibiru ship, by positioning it in a certain network of stars, determined the transformation of the DNA of the primates of that time not only mentally but also emotionally. In addition to the influence of Tenneco and the Nibiru spacecraft, an important role in transforming the DNA of primitive beings Homo erectus was played by the stellar alignment about 432,000 years ago when the Earth was right at the center of that stellar alignment. Thus the energetic influences from the Nibiru ship and the stellar alignment as well as the energetic and genetic influences from the Tenneco on the DNA of a certain type of primate, led to the appearance of two types of beings marked with the symbols ENL and ENK. ENL beings were 80% hybridized to extraterrestrial DNA, and the remaining 20% of their DNA came from primates. The extraterrestrial DNA of ENL beings first came only from the Anunnaki aliens and later from other civilizations in the galaxy such as the Arcturians, Pleiadians, and others. This allowed the incarnation in those bodies of some souls of Syrian or Anunnaki origin, but also the souls of other beings from the mentioned extraterrestrial civilizations or others. For example, the biblical Adam was an ENL being and represented the incarnation of a highly evolved extraterrestrial entity of Syrian origin, so Anunnaki. And from Adam the future branches of ENL beings developed. These beings have evolved so much over time that they have gradually retreated to the etheric plane. Especially after the sinking of Atlantis, very few of them remaining physically on the surface of the planet to the present day. In the case of ENK beings, the reverse was true. That is, they had a very large proportion of primate DNA and very little extraterrestrial DNA, the ENK beings were allowed to evolve more slowly, at their own pace. Only after the Teotihuacan Planetary Council from Mexico about 26,000 years ago and then after the sinking of Atlantis 13,500 years ago did ENK beings begin to be helped to evolve at a faster pace, being hybridized with extraterrestrial DNA from certain civilizations in our galaxy. But even so, the DNA from primates still remains the majority. Today most of human civilization is of the ENK type. And that's because the Anunnaki aliens wanted to get a creature that has the basic structure of the great primates that lived on Earth but in a much evolved form, ENK beings being more adapted to life on this planet. Specifically, the Homo sapiens civilization is a link between most of the ENK branch and the remaining parts of the ENL branch or hybridizations between them, so in the DNA of humans today there are, in addition to the majority of primate DNA, DNA from Anunnaki aliens but also from other extraterrestrial civilizations such as the Pleiadians, Arcturians, or others, but to a lesser extent. So from the forgotten book of Genesis it appears that the Anunnaki Syrians are the basis for the birth and formation of human civilization and they are also the basis of human DNA. Being practically those who helped the primitive beings of hundreds of thousands of years ago to evolve and it reaches the human being who currently lives on Earth. Also from the forgotten book of Genesis we learn that about 100,000 years ago reptilian aliens then entered our solar system with their fleet. They then succeeded in transmitting elements of their own DNA to the human population through civilizations that were members of the Galactic Alliance and even a civilization that descended from the Anunnaki of the Sirius A system, thus managing to corrupt the DNA of a small number of humans. Human beings, but that corruption later spread to a larger number of people. However, reptiles could only in time control those humans who had a certain reptilian influence and energy in their DNA to some extent. This is also true today. It should be noted that the reptile influence on human DNA is a small proportion of about 2-3% to of DNA and is not the same for all humans. To counter the attack of reptiles, the Galactic Alliance's Sirius A system leaders, along with other Alliance member civilizations, have decided to introduce to Earth the technology of the great beneficial energy resonators, the pyramids and ziggurats, in order to protect humans from the influence of reptiles. By their shape, 
the pyramids are powerful amplifiers of subtle energy, so that the energies emitted by the sophisticated devices inside them and the crystals are greatly amplified and transmitted in space to a well-defined target. On the other hand, the pyramids have the role of supporting the beneficial frequencies over a wide area around them so that human beings do not fall under the influence of hostile factors such as negative influences from reptilians. Because it seems that they have built a mental network of lower frequencies as a cage in order to negatively influence people. For example, the three pyramids on the Giza Plateau in Egypt represent the style of the announcements in the Sirius A system, and the stepped pyramids in South America represent the style of the announcements in the Orion Belt. We also learn from the book that the Sirius Eans are very technologically advanced, so they could have easily defeated the reptiles about 100,000 years ago when they entered our solar system, thus being able to stop them before they could manage to corrupt human DNA. That way we can rightly ask ourselves why they didn't do this. The book gives us an explanation that I will give briefly, the intervention of reptiles was a necessity that led to a greater specialization of human DNA giving the possibility to incarnate in the physical plane of a large number of beings from the astral plane. Which otherwise would not have had the level necessary to be born into higher physical bodies. Through incarnation they could go through certain existential crises so that they understand the need to correct the way they live and thus evolve. Also from the forgotten book of Genesis we find that the city of Teotihuacan in Mexico is a faithful replica of a Syrian or a Nunaki city, in which for a long time it was populated mainly by Syrians and Pleiadians, but also by other extraterrestrial civilizations. The design and construction basis of the city is Syrian, its design respecting the affinities of cosmic energies in direct and precise correspondence with the stars and planetary systems of many civilizations in the Galactic Alliance.